very good morning children and today we will be doing a bit of poetry with the poem titled an elementary school classroom in a slum now this is the second part of your poetry section of your text flamingo and this poem or rather the poet stephen spender an english poet and an essayist he talks about social injustice and class inequalities all right through the situation of education that he has portrayed in the slum area the classroom the physical features of the students the surroundings that they live in he is trying to show to us the social injustice and the inequalities that used to be present during his time right another thing he talks about in this poem very clearly is the theme of poetry of poverty sorry it's a theme of poverty he talks about impoverished children children who do not have enough to eat all right those kind of children and the future that these children look forward to and so with this first let's just read through the poem once thereafter we'll take it stanza by stanza and I'll explain to you the message that the poet is trying to convey through his lines and I begin reading the poem an elementary school classroom in a slum by Stephen Spender far far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round the pallor the tall girl with a weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in a tree room other than this on sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belled flowery tireless valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all the futures painted with the fog a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far far from rivers capes and stars of words surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal for lies that slyly turn in the cramped holes from fog to endless night on this lag heap these children with mended glasses like bottle bits on stones all of their time and space are foggy slum so block the maps with slum as big as do unless governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or oh break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run a zero on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history there's whose language is the sun so the poem in itself is pretty self explanatory if you go through the lines very carefully the poet generally talks about a particular classroom all right and then he talks about individual students how they are suffering or how they have suffered from diseases that they have inherited from their fathers how the poetry of shakespeare presents a very uh, romanticized world to them one of which they can't even dream of all right and how in the end he invokes the Uh, intervention of the people who can make positive changes in the lives of these children 
right? Now let's just take the poetry, or rather the entire poem, power by power. Now the first power. All right, first power reads, Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces, like rootless weeds, the hair torn round the pallor, the tall girl with a weighed down head, the paper-seeming boy with wax eyes, the stunted, unlucky air of twisted bones, reciting a father's gnarled disease, his lesson from his desk. At back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young, his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this. Right, so, in the first para, the poet describes to us a school, all right, which is present in a slum. And the children who are there, sitting inside the class, they show to us, or rather they are pictures of the social injustice and poverty, all right, which is common among people who live in the slum. So in this first stanza, our poet, Stephen Spender, he describes the miserable condition of the children that are present there in the classroom. The faces of the children are not the ones which you would expect in other schools. Right? They are not energetic like children are supposed to be. They are not full of life. In fact, they are like rootless weeds, withered and worn out. They are very unclean and untidy. And they are also malnourished, all right? They haven't been getting the proper nutrition that they should be getting. They are sick and they are hungry. And the poet compares these children to weeds because weeds are something which we do not want even in our gardens. We just pluck weeds from the root and throw it away. They have, see, they have pale faces and their hair is uncombed. They're very unhygienic. A tall, a tall, slim girl has her head bowed down as though she is exhausted physically. She's physically exhausted, all right? Maybe she has not eaten properly. Maybe she has not slept properly. There are a lot of reasons behind it and none of them are any good reasons. It is all because of the poverty that she lives in. The other students are no better themselves, all right? There's a boy who is as thin as paper not slim but thin as paper again it's simply a case of a child not having to eat a full meal all right and it is all again because of poverty see his even his eyes are like that of a rat searching for food and better life and there's another child in the class who is a victim of genetic disorder, all right? He has twisted bones, he has stunted grown, growth, he is a dwarf, D-W-A-R-F, dwarf, all right? He can, his height is not what it's supposed to be. And it so happens that he has inherited this disease from his father, all right? Maybe his father also has the same disease. And he reads his lessons in a weak voice. Again, he doesn't have the strength. And in one corner of this very poorly lit classroom is a sweet, unnoticed young child. And that child is lost in his world of dreams. The classroom in itself, a very dull atmosphere. It does not interest him at all. He's more interested about squirrels that are there, maybe prancing about along the trees. He too dreams of fun and frolic in an open space. Just like the squirrel, he wants to be free, he wants to run around. In the second para, which reads, On sour cream walls, donations, Shakespeare's head, cloudless at dawn, civilized dome riding all cities, belled, flowery, Tyroless Valley, open-handed map, awarding the world its word. And yet, for these children, these windows, not this map, their world, where all the futures painted with a fog. 
a narrow street sealed in with a left sky, far, far from rivers, caves, and stars of wood. So in this second stanza, the poet, he describes the classroom now. In the first stanza, he was talking about the students. Now he comes to the classroom in the second stanza. On the walls of the classroom, there are names of the people who have given donations. All right. And then there's a statue of Shakespeare, a bust of Shakespeare, meaning half statue of Shakespeare, which is displayed in the classroom. Walls have pictures of beautiful valleys as well as map of the world. All right, the, the classroom wall is decorated with all these things. But these children, their eyes can only view a narrow road enclosed with a dull sky. It's quite a dreary and depressing place for children. See, in the classroom walls, there are beautiful donations. All right, Shakespeare got a statue like a eraser. Then there are a scenic posters of valleys. Then there are uh, m there is a map of the world that has been po pasted on the world. But these things mean nothing to these children because they haven't seen life at all. They belong to the slums. They haven't been to any valleys. They haven't seen any part of the world, and they cannot even e imagine themselves being a part of it. For when they look forward, they only see a narrow road which is closed, all right? They can't even see the sky. Their vision is very limited. Maybe that is towards the survival of self. Now coming to the third stanza, surely Shakespeare is wicked. The map, a bad example, which ships and sun will love tempting them to steal. The lives that slyly turn in the cramped holes from fog to endless night. On the slag heap, these children were skins peeled through by bones and spectacles of steel, with mended glasses, with mended glass, like bottle bits on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum, so blot the maps with slums as big as doom. So, in this third stanza, the poet now. First stanza, he was talking about the students. Second stanza, he was talking about the class. Now in the third stanza, he kind of shows his frustration, all right, of what he has been talking about till now. He says that Shakespeare is such a wicked person, all right, because this is misleading the children. He talks about beautiful ships, beautiful world of ships, of the sun and love, of kindness, of care, but these children do not know any of this. You, Shakespeare is simply corrupting the children, all right? Because now they have a desire for a better life, but they have no means about it. So they may do wrong things to achieve these things, but their life is limited to the cramped holes of the slum area, and so he. It is a very Sad situation. See, these children are so weak and so thin that it looks as if they are wearing skin over bones. They don't have any muscles. They don't have any meat on their body. All right, it's just skin that has, it's just bones that has been covered with skins. The spectacle which they are wearing it is already broken and mended. All right, it is broken. You can see that it is broken. They cannot afford new spectacles, so it has just been mended. So the poet, he shows his anger, right, by suggesting that the maps on the walls should show other slums and not the beautiful world because they can never be a part of it. Now, coming to the final stanza, which reads, unless governor, inspector, visitor, this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs, break or break, open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make the world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books. The white and green leaves open, history theirs whose language is the sun. So in the final stanza, now the poet, he reveals that there is a way, all right, there is a way that these children can have a better life. 
But for that to happen, the people who hold the power, like a governor, a school inspector, or a visitor, visits the school and sort of takes the initiative to bring in the changes that is required for these children to have a better life. Because the map in the classroom, or the map which is present in the classroom, it is the only way they know, it is the only way they can imagine life outside the slum. Their poverty should not confine their will to a better life. Then he talks to people who are in power, all right, the poet, to help these children, to bring them out of this slum and give them a better life. Show them how beautiful the world really is. Show them that the knowledge uh, sceneries depicted uh, in the textbooks, the love that it is talked about, the care that it is talked about, they can experience it firsthand. See, the poet, he very honestly wants that each and every child should be able to enjoy freedom. All right, They should be able to enjoy life. They should have access to all kinds of books. And they should also be able to learn from nature around them. All right? Na they should be allowed to be in the open. They should be allowed to see the beautiful beauty of the world for what it is. And not just through text living in a slum. So with that, the poem comes to an end. Basically, once again, Poet Leke Bannukhoz, they said that he is trying to portray the social injustice that is present, all right, and the poverty which is present in the slum area and how these things affect the children that are trying to get an education in a classroom in a slum, which has, which is mostly devoid of facilities as well. In the first stanza, he talks about the children. The second, he talks about the classroom. In the third, he talks about the reality. And the fourth, he talks about a way out. All right. All in all, this is a very beautiful poem put together by the poet Stephen Spender. I hope that you have understood the poem better. Please go through the text. All right. I keep repeating. Please go through the text line by line and then go through this video. All right. I hope you have understood the poem well. Please stay home, take care and stay safe.